what we're looking at here is forces, masses, and acceleration. Uh, so these are Newton's laws. And like I said, you may have learned about them in the past, um, but as a refresher slash, you know, clarifying some of the bits that may or may not have worked in the past, um, we're gonna talk about all three of Newton's laws here, okay? Um, we just saw in the little lab demo we did that there is a relationship between the forces acting on an object, the mass of the object being acted upon, and its acceleration. And we know that um, F equals MA, so a force is equal to a mass times an acceleration. Uh, the mass and acceleration are inversely proportional such that as one of them goes up, like as we have more mass, this acceleration will go down, assuming that you have the same amount of force, right? Um, if I tell you to move a, a small child, you can easily push them and they'll accelerate. And then if I say, okay, now I need you to move this 800 pound wheelbarrow, like, Maybe you can do it. The mass sure did increase, um, but the acceleration is going to go down there. Uh, and we can always rearrange this equation to solve for the acceleration, or you can solve for the mass. You can do anything with it, right? Now, from this thing we saw, this, uh, this set up the equation from the lab, um, we actually use the units of force as newtons, which we use as a capital N, named after Sir Isaac Newton himself. Um, and this definition of a newton is basically saying that if you have a one newton of force, that one newton of force will move a kilogram at a acceleration of one meter per second squared. And it's important to recognize that this is an acceleration, okay? Whenever you're pushing on something with that force of a newton, it's not just like moving at a constant speed. It's accelerating the whole time. It's always speeding up as long as that force is acting on it or as long as that net force is acting on it, okay? So if you had a one kilogram mass and you pushed on it with one newton of force, it will speed up at a rate of one meter per second every second or a meter per second squared, okay? Um, this is kind of weird thinking about that, that it's always going to be speeding up, especially here on Earth, because on Earth we have friction, um, we have air resistance. So typically as objects start to move, um, these effects start taking over a little bit and uh, we kind of get an equilibrium or a balance of forces, which we'll talk about momentarily. Um, but if there are, if there is a net force there, there's some force acting on the object um, that's going to cause it to accelerate, it will speed up the whole time, okay? And that brings us into Newton's first law of motion. Um, sometimes the law, first law of motion is kind of stated like this. Um, if an object is at rest, it will remain at rest. An object at motion remains in motion. And that's a garbage way of saying that. It's really bad, actually. Um, a better way of saying it is if the forces acting on an object are balanced, then the object's velocity remains constant. So its speed and its direction will remain the same. And the subtle reason why this is better is think of it this way. Um, you're playing tug of war, okay? And you're perfectly matched against your opponent. So, you know, Let's just draw you real quick. Here's you, here's like a big rope or something, and here's your opponent, poorly drawn. If, here's like the flag, right? If you're both pulling on this rope, then there are forces acting on the rope, right? You're pulling with some force and they're pulling with some force. But since these forces are equal and they have direction, they're effectively canceling one another out which means that the forces are balanced. This means that the velocity will remain constant. And in this case, since nothing was moving, the velocity will remain zero. The object is at rest, okay? Um, but that's not always the case. Um, so if, if something's at rest and nothing pushes or pulls on it, yeah, it's gonna remain at rest, that just makes sense. But if, if you have a scenario where the forces are balanced, but the object was already moving, it's still going to move with the same speed and in the same direction. So think about this. Think about if you're bowling, okay? You release the bowling ball out of your hand and as it rolls down the lane, it had some speed. Well, it's going to keep that speed because you're not pushing on it anymore and the bowling lane is like waxed so well that there's very little friction. Um, or you could think of it like this. If you're in a boat, you know, your boat motor is uh, helping your boat move forward in the water, but that water is pushing back on you. 
if your boat's kind of giving you that oomph to go forward in the water at the same force the water is pushing back on you, you're not going to stop. You're just going to be on like cruise control. You're just going to keep an even pace. Uh, same thing with a car. You know, you put your foot on the gas and you keep it at 60 miles per hour. Sure, your motor, your engine's telling your car to go forward, but there's some air resistance, some friction uh, pushing you back and holding you at 60 miles per hour. So you still have a velocity. You still have a speed and a direction. Speed and direction. Um, but this is the first law of motion because those forces are balanced there. Okay. Now our second law of motion, um, we can talk about how the acceleration is proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass. Um, but really what the second law is saying is that F equals MA. So that equation that we already kind of saw, that is what Newton's second law is. Um, and what we saw in the lab is this second law. As you push or pull on something, you're going to get it to accelerate more. Um, if it's more massive, that acceleration will be less. That's it. That's all it's saying. Um, if we take a look at this in terms of uh, uh, a boat, um, when we take a look at these forces here for the F in F equals MA, when we take a look at these forces, what we're really talking about are net forces, and we see net force here. And what this means is that if your boat, if your uh, your motor is pushing on your boat uh, with a lot of force, or something's pushing on the boat with a lot of force, and the water is only pushing back a little bit, if we add these forces together, this might be something like, I don't know, seven, this might be like a three, and if we go seven minus three, we're going to get out of it four, which makes sense. Um, so really our net force there is only going to be that left over. And we see that just by adding vectors with the head tail method um, and getting some resultant vector out of that. So we'll talk about that more in a future video, but it's really a net force, the summation of all the forces acting on an object, that's gonna cause your boat to accelerate um, and move forward, okay? Now, technically speaking, objects can accelerate in more than one direction. Um, there is an X direction and a Y direction. We saw that when we talked about uh, projectile motion. These are independent of one another. Um, we can think about X's and Y's differently. And if we think about it in the case of the boat, you know, your boat could be speeding up down the river, but in terms of the Y direction, like your boat has a weight, you know, it's trying to sink into the water, but the water is also pushing up on your boat. So you're balanced up and down because your boat's like not flying into the sky and it's hopefully not sinking, but you are speeding up left and right. So these are independent of one another. Okay. And we can think about things in the X direction and the Y direction independently. Now we also know, and this just kind of makes sense when you think about it, that uh, whatever direction the force is pushing on an object, that's the direction of the acceleration. So if you know, you're standing here and someone pushes you to the right with a force, you're going to accelerate to the right because those forces uh, in acceleration, they're both vectors and they act in the same direction. This also means that if you have an object like a ball and it's moving with a velocity to the right, if you then uh, have a force acting on it to the left, like some friction, that friction is gonna slow the object down. And we know this because if your velocity and your acceleration vector are in opposite directions, you're gonna slow down. And we saw that all the way back in unit uh, two, I believe, um, when we started talking about velocities and acceleration as vectors. So just something to keep in mind. So if you have a boat, you know, the motor is maybe like toned down a little bit, but the water is still pushing back heavily. Um, uh, our net force is gonna go to the left. So even though the boat was moving to the right, it's gonna slow down here because the net force is opposing it. Okay, so it's slowing down, it's accelerating in that negative direction, decelerating, um, we, that's what we see, okay? And we know once again that the more mass of an object is, so maybe you know this mass of the boat's like 100 and this mass is like 1,000, um, the more massive object will accelerate at a lesser rate, okay? It'll still speed up, but it's gonna speed up not as quickly, okay? So that's what we'll see in that regard. Now, one last thing um, before we kind of end this here is uh, 
when we talk about forces for Newton's third law, Newton's final law here, um, we can say that forces are equal and opposite interactions between two objects. Um, when we talked about the fundamental forces, we always talked about the force carrying particles, you know, positive and negatives. Uh, mass needs two objects for gravity to kind of, or gravity needs two objects for the masses to kind of attract one another. We always need two things here. Um, we call these action reaction pairs when we have two things that are doing this. And these action reaction pairs um, may, they're not tied to the object's motion. Uh, they're tied to the forces themselves. And this is kind of weird to think about. So let's look at a few examples. Um, the water in this case is pushing back on the boat, right? The boat's moving to the right, water's pushing back on the boat. So this means that the boat needs to be doing something to the water. So the boat is pushing the water forward. Notice how we have uh, the water and uh, boat and the boat and the water. If we think about this in another example, um, a boat is moving forward because of the propeller. Well, what's really happening is the propeller is pushing the water backwards. And then the water is pushing that propeller, which is attached to the boat, forward. So that is an action-reaction pair there, okay? Um, you can't just say that, hey, uh, the propeller spins, that makes the boat go forward, because that's not true. Um, if you take a boat out of the water and you just like spin it in the air, your boat's not moving. Uh, the air isn't dense enough to actually get a good push off of, and your boat's just going to do nothing. Um, so these action-reaction pairs, uh, we see both of the objects, the water and the boat, or the, rather the propeller, um, in both of these scenarios. And we've got to be really careful about this in some cases, because if we take a look at this in the y direction, the water is supporting the boat. And we know that you know gravity is pulling on the boat, so the earth is pulling the boat down. These forces are equal and opposite, but they are not an action-reaction pair. They are equal and opposite. That's what we want. Woo! But they are not an action-reaction pair. And the reason being is uh, while the water is supporting the boat, the boat is pushing the water down. So it's because the, the boat's pushing water down that the water's pushing the boat back up. Boat, water, water, boat. When the earth is pulling the boat, the boat down, well, if we think back to yesterday with gravity, this means that the boat is actually pulling the earth up. Notice earth, boat, earth, boat. These are the action-reaction pairs. So it's a little bit weird to think about. Um, oftentimes in physics, like we won't really concern ourselves with you know, the whole action-reaction pairing will be like, hey, look, there's a weight, there's something supporting the boat, we're good, because we know everything else is kind of like nuanced, but it is important to recognize what the action-reaction pairs are and uh, not to get confused on that, okay? So hopefully this here, you know, gave you a better idea of Newton's three laws and what's happening um, between them. Uh, what we're going to take a look at in future videos and tomorrow, um, we'll be taking a look at how we can easily draw all of these forces and how we can use them to actually start solving out uh, some more advanced physics concepts. So until then, adios and take it easy.